Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, software engineer and entrepreneur, and in this video, we'll be learning about custom renderers in Xamarin Forms. Now here, I have a content page with just a label inside, and here on iOS, what we're looking at at runtime, this is not a Xamarin Forms label. This is actually a UI label. Uh, from the UI kit namespace, which is native iOS. And similarly here on Android, what we're looking at is not a forms label. We are looking at an Android text view from the Android widget namespace. Again, na this, this time native Android. So how does Xamarin Forms work? What is actually happening behind the scenes that you can define a label in the abstract and then at runtime you will get the appropriate native controls? So that's what we'll be learning about today. So the process uh, of, of going from a Xamarin Forms element to a native control is called rendering. And every Xamarin Forms visual element has a renderer class associated with it. And I'll just uh, show you real quick um, here. So for example, we were just looking at the label, right? So a label here has a label renderer class and on iOS it's going to render to a UI label and on Android to a text view. So as you see here, image, there's an image renderer, entry renderer, the button renderer, UI button, Android widget button. So, and not, not only for, for views, but also for layouts, for example, scroll view, scroll view renderer, on iOS goes to UI scroll view and on Android to, to scroll view and so on, even content page there's a page renderer, and if you're familiar with iOS development, for example, here, um, this is exactly what you would expect that a content page would render to a UI view controller than on Android to a, to a view group. So let's go back here, and let's actually start, um, let's create a label, a UI label, and an, and a and an Android text view from scratch. So let's go ahead and comment this out. And when you're when writing a custom renderer for a label, uh, normally you um, well let's, let's actually go ahead and create a new a new view. So I have a folder here here called custom elements. I add a new file, and I'm just going to call this custom view. Now normally, like I was saying, so normally if you want to write a custom renderer for a label, what you would do is here in our in your uh, custom view or custom label, for example, you would derive from label. But here for illustrative purposes, for learning purposes of how rendering and custom rendering works, we're just going to be deriving from a general Xamarin Forms view, just to show you in the general how this works. So using Xamarin Forms uh, here, and here you can actually define bindable properties if you actually want to use uh, data binding, and I'll show you in a moment um, how, how, how that would work. So we have our custom view here. And now here, instead of our label, we want our custom view. And we actually need to bring in an XML namespace. So we're gonna call it custom. And let's say CLR namespace, custom renders dot, and then where are we? So custom renders, and then we are in custom elements. That's the namespace, custom elements. And then we want the assembly. So the assembly would be the PCL itself. So custom renders here, okay? And now we can actually go ahead and add our view. So it's a custom view. Let's close it out. And we actually want, we still want the vertical options and horizontal options here. Okay. Now we haven't associated any renderer or custom renderer to this custom view. So if we run it right now, since we're only driving from view, we're, we're just going to see a blank screen, a blank transparent view on both iOS and Android. So now the next step is to actually create our custom renderers that will actually render our um, our forms view here. So we'll do iOS first. So I already created a, a folder called custom controls. Let's add a new file. And we're going to call it custom view render. So naming convention is typically the name of your forms element, your custom element that you, that you want to write a custom renderer for and just add the word render to it. Let's create it. And now this is going to derive from view renderer. As I was showing you here, we have uh, specific renders. Uh, for example, we have a label render, list view render, but we are going to be using the generic view render. So it, ta so it takes uh, the first type here would be the, the Xamarin Forms view itself. So custom view, oops, custom view, and we need the namespace. 
well, we actually need the view render uh, render namespace first. There we go. Sorry, it was a little <laughs> delay there. So this is in Xamarin Forms platform iOS. So this is iOS specific. And again, so we want the custom view first for the, the first type, and we need to bring in that namespace as well, where that where that's living, and then we want the native control. So we so what do we want? We wanted to create a label from scratch, and we have a view. So we want this view to on iOS to render to a UI label, and this is in the UI kit namespace. So let's go ahead and bring and bring that in. Now, if we examine this view renderer class here on, on iOS, deriving from Visual Element Renderer. And that, that actually derives from UI view. So that's that's very interesting. So this renderer is a native UI view. This is a native. This is all native iOS here at this point. And this and we're going to get a, uh, make a UI label um, here. So here we all, we need an assembly level level attribute here called export renderer. And the reason we, we need it is because when Xamarin Forms initializes, it's going to scan, go through the loaded assemblies, and it's going to find these export render attributes. And it's, and it's going to, when it finds it, it's going to associate the type of the, of the Xamarin Forms element, which is custom view, to the type of uh, the render itself. So in this case, it would be custom view renderer. Now, because we're outside, we're outside the namespace, we need to actually bring in the namespace for where this is. So using the custom controls. Okay, so now, now we're ready. So now Xamarin forms when it finds its export render upon initialization at the assembly level, a method is going to get called here, an override called on element changed. And this is really where the magic happens. This is where you set your native control. So, First of all, we have a control property and an element property here. So the control property would be our UI label. It would be our native control itself. And our element property would be our Xamarin Forms element. Now, the first time on element changes, change is called, control is going to be null because we haven't set the native control yet. So we're going to say if, if the control property is null, because we want to set the native control only the first time the this, this on element change is called upon initialization. So here, we're actually going to start creating our native iOS um, control. So here we'll do a UI label, and let's just call it label, new UI label. So here, this is amazing. Here, at this point, we're doing pure iOS-specific development. We have access to the entire APIs, of the, the native iOS APIs at this point. Uh, so... Let's set, so the reason you would write a custom renderer in this case, for example, is if you want to access properties, methods, or events of the native control that your Xamarin Forms element is rendering to, because Xamarin Forms doesn't provide access to the entire native API surface. So that's why the value of the custom renderer is so great, because you have the flexibility that if you want to access a property, a method, or an event that you don't have access to in Xamarin Forms at that level, at that API level, you can go into the, the native iOS and the native Android and access any property uh, that you want, any class, any namespace. It's just absolutely beautiful and flexible. So here in our UI label, we're going to set the text if there's a text property and this is native and we're going to say hello from iOS and we also want to um, set the font property here and this is a UI font again this is we're doing completely native iOS development we want to say system font of size and for a parameter let's just pass the size of the font which uh, let's just uh, call it the say it's 24 and now very importantly this is where the magic really happens this is my favorite method set native control and you pass your instance of your native control now this will actually your control property at this point will no longer be null and you'll have um, now your Xamarin forms element is going to properly um, render to this um, this UI label absolutely beautiful so let's actually go ahead and run this in iOS and see what we get and um, and by the way there's another override here that is um, that I'll show you in a moment. It's called on element property changed, and that's if you want to in your custom view and your forms view if you define bindable properties here 
in on an on element property change, which I'll show you in a moment, that's where you can actually respond to listen to bindable property changes. So if you want to use data binding here, you absolutely can. And that's part of the reason why you have an element property, oh, which we actually misspelled form iOS. This would be, <laughs> so we meant uh, from iOS. But I mean, so let's actually just, um, let's stop for a moment and I'll just quickly show you the override. So override on element property change. So here we can just uh, do conditional statements and listen to for certain properties and, and trigger events or whatever we need. So we can, so if we have bindable properties. Now in this video, we won't create bindable properties. We'll do that in a future video just to keep it simple, but just know that you can you use data binding and everything. And here, for example, you have an element property, which is your custom view, your Xamarin Forms element, and you can pull bindable properties out of there, out of that, through the element property, and use them to set properties or methods of native, uh, of the native control, which, so it's absolutely beautiful. So, let's actually just go ahead and run this um, one more time. <laughs> uh, so, and, and that's iOS. Now for Android, it's going to be the, the exact same thing. We are, we are going to, um, go into the Android uh, project and create a renderer. Um, so let me just show you here. Hello from iOS, just as we expect. We set the text through in this custom renderer. We set the text of the native. We didn't set the text of the Xamarin Forms view or label or anything. We're doing it in the native here um, uh, control here. And we set the font to 24 and that's what we actually see. Fantastic. So now let's go ahead and, um, and go into Android. Custom controls, add new file. Custom view, oops, renderer, same thing. And now here we are going to derive from view renderer, just like before. But now this one is in Xamarin Forms platform Android. So this is uh, Android specific code right here. So we want our custom view, your Xamarin Forms view, that's the first generic parameter here. And then we want the native control. So what do we want? So we're trying to, to we're creating a label from scratch. Uh, what what it would be um, on Xamarin Forms a label. So what is what is a native control for a label? As we saw here, for a label it would be a text view. So we'll say text view, and we just need to bring in the Android widget namespace. Again, completely native Android. And if we go here, if we look into this view renderer class, now we see. It derives from visual element renderer, and this one derives from forms view group. And if you actually keep going, view group, and then we'll ultimately ultimately get to view. This is an Android view, and then you see this uh, this view group is implementing a Java object. So this is completely native um, Android here. So this render, just like the iOS render, is iOS specific. This is completely Android specific code. So in this render, again we have access to the entire API surface for both iOS and Android. So let's fix this constructor. It actually requires a context um, a parameter here. Let's bring in, oh, whoops, Android content. And let's just uh, send this uh, to the base. Yeah, I just don't like those warnings. So same thing when forms initializes, it, it's going to go through the assembly and it's going to look for these export render assembly level attributes to create the internal mapping from the forms element to the to the custom render in this case for Android. So forms will do it for both iOS and Android and whatever platforms you're supporting. So the first parameter, the type of your Xamarin Forms view, which is your custom view, and then the second type, the custom renderer itself, custom view. Render and again because we're outside the namespace, we need to actually bring in um, those the, the appropriate namespaces and let's close this out. So, so when Forms finds this export render attribute here on Android, it's going to uh, be calling. It's going to call on element changed here. The same this override here. So we're going going to do the same thing. So if the control property is null. So if this is the first time on element change is being called here. We're, we are going to create our instance of our native. Um, Android control. So we'll do it a little bit differently just to show you the flexibility. So we'll straight up call set native control and we'll pass in a new text view. And the constructor requires a context, which is a property here. This is just how an native Android um, works. And here we'll just set the text property for this text view. And we'll just say hello from Android. And now after we set the native control, now the control property is no longer null and we have access uh, to the native control through the control property. 
So here we can say control, for example, dot, and here we have access to all the uh, um, Android text view um, properties, methods, and events. So here I want to call a method called set text size, and the first parameter is just your um, your complex unit type. Let's say scale pixel, and then 24, same size as in iOS. Now. And same thing, also we want to respond to bindable property changes. We have an on element property changed, and here we can just do conditional statements and um, for whatever property changes we can do what, um, what we want. And um, again, for the element property here, your custom view here, you have, you have access to those bindable properties, and you can use those values to set um, properties, uh, methods, etc., of native controls, just like for iOS. So absolutely, it's just so beautiful how forms uh, and native is just flowing. It, that's really, um, Xamarin Forms really is native ultimately because at runtime it's all native controls. So um, if we actually run this, this is um, what we would get. Hello from Android. And I didn't run it just because it, it might, it's going to get in the way of my uh, video recording here, but um, this is exactly what you would get, what we would expect. Um, the text, which we set it here natively. Again, we didn't set this in a label or a, a Xamarin Forms label or a Xamarin Forms view. This this is directly setting the native control properties and calling native methods um, to to customize the visual appearance. So absolutely beautiful, powerful, and we'll we'll go into more detail um, in future videos. So. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Also, please subscribe so you're the first to be notified when new videos come up. And I'll see you next time.